Hello students, this is Dr. Shabana Begum presenting a talk on the topic abiotic factors such as light, temperature and soil pertaining to BSc Zoology 5th semester in the pipe paper entitled The Environmental Biology and Ethology. In my previous class, I have discussed about the concept of ecological niche and its types. The main objectives of the topic is to understand the sensitive relationships of species, interactions that can change depending on particular conditions under which they occur, including both abiotic and biotic factors, and to understand the role of abiotic factors such as light temperature soil on the modulation of adaptability to sustain life. As we know, abiotic factors are non-living factors which play a major role in the survival and development of an organism. Light, which is very important and the amount of sunlight of an area greatly influences the life of animals and plants. Temperature, also another important abiotic factor which affects the metabolic processes and their rate. Water is essential requirement for the survival of an organism, but its requirements varies from organism to organism. Wind velocity of an area governs its temperature and humidity. The wind speed can also affect the size of the vegetation growing in the area. Soil also is very important abiotic factor which affects the distribution of plants as well as animals. Before starting giving a talk on the effect of light on animals, let me tell you what light is. So, light is one of the complex environmental or ecological factor without which life cannot exist and it also has far reaching effects on animals. The most powerful source of light is the sunlight and it is indispensable for photosynthesis of plants. The life giving sun's energy is trapped in the food prepared by the green plants. The green plants are the essential energy producers for the entire animal kingdom. Light is thus responsible for directing and controlling the structural and behavioral characteristics of the organisms. Light is not only a vital factor but also a limiting factor both at the maximum and minimum level. Hence, you can say growth of the animal is directly under the influence of light. For example, hydroids show completely inhibited growth when kept in darkness. After transformation, the energy appears in the form of heat. The sun's energy ends up as heat. Half the total emission of the sun is infrared radiation and half is visible light. The frequency of wavelengths in visible light ranges from 390 to 760 nanometer. The intensity of light on Earth's surface is independent and is dependent upon the angle of incidence and the amount of absorption of rays by the different layers in the atmosphere. Duration of light and amount of light also affects the organisms. What about migration? So, when you talk about the effect of light on animals, the first thing you can think of a photo period. What is a photo period? Photo period is the day length or duration of light and how it affects animals you can just see in the beginning. So, it affects migration. Say migration of eels, salmons and birds is affected by photoperiodism. Some birds migrate towards north during summer when days are longer and towards south when days are short during winter. Hibernation that is, in some colder countries, the shorter days trigger hibernation in animals like bears, etc. The light effects 
the animal eyes and vision for example the degree of development of the eye depends upon the intensity of light available in the environment animals living in total darkness that is cave dwelling forms like proteus nectureus and deep sea fishes etc lack eyes or they have non functional eyes or rudimentary eyes terrestrial nocturnal animals like geckos owls and tarsiers have large eyes to receive less light specialized tactile organs special eyes and luminescent organs have been developed in the absence of light the tactile organs may be in the form of long antennae as in prawns lobsters and other arthropods fin rays as in fishes serve to detect objects and disturbances caused by the movements of water or by the swimming of other organisms the compound eyes of insects are affected by light likewise in piranha fish infrared light helps to catch the prey light also affects the vision in dim light a dull and overlap superposition image is formed in insects in strong light an opposition image is formed many fishes locate their food with the help of their vision that depends upon the intensity of light man is able to see various objects only in the presence of one uh, the other form of light most of the nocturnal vertebrates have abundant rods in their eyes to make visibility possible even in diffuse light diurnal vertebrates have greater cones in their eyes how about the next effect that is the camouflage with pigmentation as we know light influences pigmentation in animals cave animals lack skin pigments darkly pigmented skins of human inhabitants of the tropics also influ influence or indicate the effect of light on skin pigmentation the role of pigmentation and protective coloration in terrestrial animals in, is induced by the light some animals develop different types of pigmentation under the influence of light during breeding season the body color of animals help to scare predators chameleons can change color to fit in with the surroundings by changing the size of pigment cells in the skin effect of light on metabolism that is the metabolism here you can say effect of light on metabolism is indirect it causes ionization of the protoplasm it increases the enzymatic activities and solubility of salts and minerals solubility of gases decreases at high light intensity animals living in caves receive poor light that is why it shows slow rate of metabolism another effect is we should talk about bioluminescence what is bioluminescence bioluminescence is the emission of light from the body of the organisms that helps to catch prey and to attract the opposite sex a variety of organisms from bacteria to fishes exhibit the phenomena of bioluminescence the production of light is due to chemiluminescent reaction in which a suitable substrate is oxidized and the accompanied energy transformation appears as visible light the light is produced as a result of the oxidative reaction of luciferin in the presence of an enzyme called luciferase as i told you the main significance of bioluminescence is to catch the prey or to attract the opposite sex and also to illuminate the surrounding effect of light on locomotion and orientation of organisms here we take into consideration the photoperiod once again 
light affects the locomotion and orientation in many of the forms like for example what is photokinesis as we show it is a phenomena where the speed of locomotion in some lower animals is regulated by the light for example the larvae of mussel crab move fast if exposed to increased light intensities what is meant by phototaxis phototaxis actually the movement of animals in response to light for example euglena move towards the source of light hence these are called as positively phototactic along with euglena other examples you can think of positively phototactic organisms are the volvox ranatra etc which move towards the source of light right so next what are negatively phototactic organisms these organisms like the planarians earthworms cockroaches slugs and copepods avoid light hence they are called as negatively phototactic that is they move away from the light next phototropism phototropism it occurs in sessile organisms and involves light directed growth mechanisms in case of stubiculus worms coelenterates for example the polyps and flagellum of euglena here only a part of their body shows movement in response to light hence it is also called as phototropism effect of light on plants so light affects plants and its various metabolic processes such as the photosynthesis it affects the leaf structure the growth the stomatal movements transpiration development etc etc to begin with let us understand the effect of light on the photosynthesis as we know visible light is indispensable for photosynthesis which is efficient means by which energy from abiotic world is trapped for utilization by the biotic world the chlorophyll of the green plants trap the solar energy carbon dioxide is combined with water to form carbohydrates the rate of photosynthesis depends on the wavelengths of light green color is absorbed by chlorophyll red algae which live in greater depths is able to utilize the light energy due to phycoerythrin in some plants the plastids produce chlorophyll only in the presence of light but in some plants it is synthesized in darkness but cannot synthesize carbohydrates without light light influences the number and position of chloroplasts the chloroplasts are bigger arranged in line and larger in the part upper part of leaves which receives full sunshine in leaves which grow in shade the chloroplasts are few in number and arrange at right angles to the light rays to increase the surface area of absorption the development of chloroplasts also depends on light the effect of light on the leaf structure the sun leaves are thick with thicker epidermis and cuticle than the shade leaves light affects the action of chloroplast differentiation of palisade tissues and spongy parenchyma spongy cells extend the leaf at right angles to the incident light while palisade cells extend the leaf in the direction of the incident light hence leaves that contain excess of spongy tissue are relatively broader while the ones which contain more palisades are thicker in deserts the leaves are thicker and spiny due to greater light intensity so photosynthesis takes place by broad flat and leaf like stem effects of light on the growth next is the growth of the plant is influenced by intensity and direction of light greater stem elongation takes place at night times means in the darkness than in the light in total absence of light for a long time plants become weak pale yellow stem in which tissues are poorly differentiated and mechanical tissues are absent plants grown in strong light are short and stocky and with healthy look 
Based on light intensity, plants can be divided into two types. Photophilus, that is heliophilus, also they are called as, are commonly called as sun plants and their leaves are like sun leaves. They prefer sunlight with little shade. Example, the sunflower, the pole, etc. The cyophilus, heliophobus also it's known as, is commonly known as shade plants and their leaves are as shade leaves, they are called, they prefer shade or diffuse light. For example, the abies, pichia as well as taxus. The next is the effect of light on stomatal movement. So opening and closing of stomata is regulated by light, temperature and moisture available. Stomata remain open when there are favorable conditions like light. In unfavorable conditions, influence of light may be different. When water supply is low, the stomata are closed even in presence of light. Stomatal number also is affected by light. In sun leaves, these are in more number than the shade leaves. The next is the effect of light on transpiration. So light affects transpiration rates indirectly through increase in temperature. When the temperature is high, the transpiration occurs even in darkness. Thus, light is not the only factor for transpiration. Transpiration rates affect water absorption. Thus, high light intensities are always associated with dry habitats and high transpiration rates. Lastly, the effect on the development. So, light influences the development of entire plant including flowers, fruits and seeds. Some plants can survive, grow and develop in shade and are called as shade plants. Example, abies, binka and taxes. Many plants which demand light are called sun plants. Vegetative crops like potatoes, carrots, beets and turnips give highest yield in cloudy days. Tobacco leaves grow better in artificial shading. Plants can be classified ecologically based on their relative light requirements and the effects of light on their vegetative development into first heliophytes which grow best in full sunlight, next the cyophytes which grow best at lower light intensities and some heliophytes grow best in sun but can grow fairly well under shade are called facultative cyophytes. Facultative heliophytes grow best at lower light intensities but can grow well in full sunlight. Light also affects the distribution of plants. Vegetation of one region differs from another depends upon the total amount of light that arrives on the earth and varies from place to place. Light conditions at poles are different from other parts of earth that is understood. So effect on orientation. So here light plays a role in orientation of plants also. Orientation in the direction of light is called as positotropism or taxis. Orientation in the opposite direction is negative tropism. In sunflower, the flowers turn by tugger changes during the course of the day, always in the direction of the sun. Long day plants grow in excess of critical minimum that is brassica, rapa, etc, etc. Once again, the photoperiodism as we all know is the response of animals to day length. So based on the photoperiodism, the plants can be divided as the short day plants, long day plants and day neutral plants. In short day plants, the plants flower in early spring or autumn and require a dark period exceeding a certain critical length. For example, the xanthium, chrysanthemum, datura, salvia, cannabis, etc. Long day plants require a period less than critical period. They flower in summer, example, the radish, spinach, sorghum, etc while the day neutral plants are unaffected by photo period for example the tomato potato and cotton how about the effect of photo period on animals like in case of plants the photo, photo period affects breeding behavior that is breeding behavior of insects certain birds and mammals Again, 
the animals can be divided into the short day animals, long day animals and day neutral animals. The short day animals breed in decreasing photo period, example sheep, deer etc. Long day animals breed in lengthening photo period, example the turkey, starlings etc. And the day neutral animals breed throughout the year, for example the rabbit, guinea pig etc. Photo periodism also affects the migration of eels, salmons and birds. It also plays an important role in the life cycle of many animals and its effects are exploited by poultry and dairy. Next what are biological rhythms? They are also called as circadian rhythms. It's a daily response of animals to light. It's a 24 hour day night cycle coinciding with the rotation of the earth for example the sleeping pattern or sleep and waking patterns. These are controlled by body's master clock located in the brain that is the hypothalamus which is called as the master clock, the biological clock you can always call it. Some animals are active during the day and are called as diurnal forms that is most of the birds like sparrows, crows, pigeons, mammals, many insects and man while the animals that are active at night are called nocturnal forms for example the owls, the rats, bats etc. Sun animals are active during dusk period and are called vespera forms for example rabbits. Let us move to the next abiotic factor that is temperature. As we know temperature is a very important and dominant ecological factor affecting the organism more conspicuously and is more different ways. It penetrates into every region of the biosphere, influences on metabolic rates and activities, growth, reproduction, behavior of organisms and also in distribution of plants and animals because of its effects on physiological processes. Some organisms cannot adapt themselves to extremes of temperature but some are adapted to survive at the extremes of temperature. Temperature is nothing but the measure of hotness. It its effects on metabolism and you talk about all metabolic processes are influenced by the temperature. It regulates the enzyme activity and affects the rate of photosynthesis, transpiration, respiration and metabolism in both plants and animals. Range of temperature when you talk about it varies in different geographical locations at different depths or altitudes and even the same localities at different times of the day or seasons of the year. Temperature variation is less in aquatic environment than the terrestrial environment. In oceans, minimum temperature is about minus 2 degrees centigrade. In summer surface, strata rises about 36 degrees centigrade. But in ponds, never falls below 0 degrees centigrade. In deep water lakes, thermal stratification is observed in summer. Temperature rises to 20, 42 degrees due to circulatory movement of water. Surface waters are brought to the deeper regions of water and vice versa. In the terrestrial environment, the temperature may fall to about minus 37 degrees centigrade in winter. The lowest temperature recorded so far is minus 70 degrees centigrade on the land in Siberia in 1947. In summer, it may be about 60 degrees centigrade and may go often up to 85 degrees centigrade in certain deserts at noon. Next, what is temperature tolerance? The range of temperature within which living organisms carry their life activities is called biokinetic zone. It lies between 10 to 45 degrees centigrade. Generally, animals cannot tolerate temperature beyond 60 degrees centigrade. The lowest temperature at which organisms can live indefinitely is the minimum efficient effective temperature. 
and the lowest temperature that permits survival is the survival temperature. If the organism is subjected to temperature below the minimum effective limit, it enters into a condition of inactiveness and it is referred to as chill coma. For example, the nematodes, rotifers and tardigrades have cooled down experimentally to minus 72 degrees centigrade and revived without apparent ill effects. The hottest cold-blooded fish, Barbua thermalis, lives in hot springs of Ceylon at temperatures of 122 degrees centigrade. The albino mouse lives at 102.2 degrees centigrade. Some bacteria thrive at 158 degrees centigrade ab uh, above. Above the maximum survival temperature, animals may enter into a condition of inactiveness called heat coma. Based on temperature tolerance, the animals are grouped into two categories, namely poikilotherms and homeotherms. So next, let us talk about the effect of temperature on plants. How about the effects of temperature. So as you all know, temperature is yet another interesting and important abiotic factor. It affects organisms more conspicuously and in more different ways. It penetrates into every region of the biosphere, influences on the metabolic rates and activities growth, reproduction, behavior of organisms and also in the distribution of plants and animals. The range of temperature when you talk about varies in different geographical locations. In the terrestrial environment, the temperature may fall to about minus 37 degrees centigrade in winter. In summer, it may be about 60 degrees centigrade or may go often up to 85 degrees centigrade in certain deserts at, at the noon. The temperature tolerance actually is the range of temperature within which living organisms carry their life activities. It is also called biokinetic zone and it lies between 10 to 45 degrees centigrade. The lowest temperature at which organisms can live indefinitely is the minimum effective temperature and the lowest temperature that permits survival is the survival temperature. If the organism is subjected to temperature below the minimum effective limit, it enters into a condition of inactiveness and it is referred to as chill coma. For example, the nematodes, rotifers and tardigrades have cooled down experimentally to minus 272 degrees centigrade and revive without apparent ill effects. The hottest cold-blooded fish, Barbua thermalis, lives in hot springs of Ceylon at temperatures of 122 degrees centigrade. Some bacteria thrive at 158 degrees centigrade or above labi. A higher temperature, they may die and due to less desiccation. Above the maximum survival temperature, animals may enter into a condition of inactiveness called heat coma. Next, the effect of temperature on metabolism. So, all metabolic processes are influenced by temperature because they regulate the activity of enzymes. And also it affects the rate of photosynthesis, transpiration, respiration and metabolism in both plants and animals. Let us move to the effect of temperature on plants. So temperature affects the rate of transpiration and photosynthesis stops at 40 degrees centigrade in temperate plants and at 50 degrees centigrade in tropical plants. The respiration rate increases with the rise of temperature while decreases rapidly above optimal temperature. The optimum temperature affects the germination of seed. Temperature and humidity affects the spreading of plant diseases. For example, 
low temperature along with high humidity favors the attack of rust uh, the plants are classified on the basis of world's vegetation with reference to prevailing temperature into megatherms mesotherms and microtherms so the plants growing in high temperature throughout the year are called as megatherms for example tropical rain forests mesotherms are the plants which grow in alternate high and low temperatures the example being deciduous tropical forest while microtherms are the plants which grow in low temperatures the example being the coniferous forest effect of temperature on animal functions such as reproduction growth and development crossing over sex ratio etc when you talk about the effect of temperature on reproduction you have to start explaining the effects like for example in case of plants when you consider flowering in plants is affected by temperature through thermoperiodism in animals the maturation of gonads or sex cells and the liberation of gametes take place at a particular temperature which varies from species to species maturation of gonads is influenced by the temperature you can say then breeding in some animals is unaffected by temperature throughout the year whereas in some breeding occurs only in summer or in winter some species may have two breeding seasons one in spring and other in some for example in blow fly the number of eggs laid per female increases with increase in temperature up to 32.5 degree centigrade but the number of decreases number decreases with further increase in temperature in grasshopper eggs produced are 20 to 30 times more at 32 degree centigrade than those at 22 degree centigrade effect on growth and development when you say actually extremely low and high temperatures have adverse effect on the growth of plants that is now you can say increase in 10 to 20 degrees centigrade temperature affects growth low temperatures bring cold injuries as desiccation chilling injury and freezing injury in desiccation the tissues are dehydrated and injured due to rapid transpiration and slow absorption during winter in case of the plants in animals temperature affects growth and development for example oyster increases from 1.5 mm to 10.3 mm with an increase in temperature from 10 degree centigrade to 20 degree centigrade sea urchin shows maximum size of its body in warmer waters corals do not flourish well when water temperature drops below 21 degrees centigrade in blow fly incubation period decreases with increase in temperature development of eggs in mackerel is greatly affected by the temperature the effect of temperature on the crossing over that is in fruit flies temperature affects the crossing over and somatic expressions of gene characters so development of wings eyes is affected if larvae or pupae are kept in low or high temperature wings tend to be longer at high and shorter at low temperatures effect on the sex ratio in rotifers and daphnids sex ratio is affected by temperature under normal conditions daphnids give parthenogenetic eggs that develop into females whereas with increase in temperature they give sexual eggs which after fertilization develop either into males or females effect of temperature on coloration when you think of some insects birds and mammals in warm humid climates bear a darker pigment than the races of same species present in cool and dry climates and this is called as glogus rule so the first diagrammatic representation of glogus rule states that in comparison to the races of same species which lives in cool and dry climate coloration is darker in 
the species which are there in the warmer regions. Even in frog, hyla and the horn toed phrenosoma, low temperatures induce darkening. When you talk about the effect of temperature on morphology, we will discuss the three rules which are the Bergman rule, Allen's rule and Jordan's rule. According to Bergman's rule, temperature affects the absolute size of an animal and the relative proportions of various body parts. Birds and mammals attain greater body size in cold regions than in warm areas. According to Allen's rule, poikilotherms are smaller in cold regions. The tail, snout, ears and legs of mammals are relatively shorter in colder part than in the warmer areas. According to Jordan's rule, fishes of low temperature waters have more vertebrae than those of warm water forms. Some more effects of temperature on animals and based on which the animals are classified into homeotherms and poikilotherms. You have studied about the words homeotherms and poikilotherms in your earlier classes too. So we can define homeotherms as endotherms or they are also called as warm blooded animals such as mammals or birds which have a body temperature that is constant and largely independent of the temperature of its surroundings. While the poikilotherms also known as ectotherms they are also called as cold blooded animals such as the invertebrates, fishes, amphibians and reptiles with a variable body temperature that tends to fluctuate with and is similar to or slightly higher than the temperature of its environment. There are forms which are called as heterotherms. These are the animals whose temperature varies considerably in different situations. For example, you can cite the examples of monotremes, sloth bear and ant eaters. As I have already told you, based on temperature tolerance, the animals are grouped into two categories, namely poikilotherms and homotherms. Poikilotherms are also called as cold-blooded animals. They have fluctuating body temperature but maintain their body temperature within narrow range of plus or minus 5 degrees centigrade. When temperature fluctuates beyond the limits, usually animals hibernate or estivate. Some poikilotherms avoid both heat and cold by underlying lying dormant in period of environmental stress. How about thermoregulation? How do animals regulate their body temperature? The thermoregulation in poikilotherms are the cold blooded animals. For example, for example, you can say many insects like some crustaceans, mites as well as snails enter a stage which is called as diapas which is a state of dormancy and arrested growth. Some poikilotherms become dormant in extreme temperature. For example, amphibians, turtles, snakes, lizards live in burrows. Few insects, certain amphibians and reptiles maintain their body temperature by physiological or behavioral mechanisms. For example, hawk moths can raise the temperature of their flight muscle to 32 to 36 degrees centigrade by vibrating the wings before takeoff and gregarious butterfly larvae may raise their body temperature 1.5 to 2 degrees centigrade by clustering together. Locusts and grasshoppers increase their body temperature 10 degrees centigrade by basking sideways in the sun and move their larvae to warm or cool place. When temperature drops, lizards bask in the sun to achieve more temperature. One of this is attained, they will, once this is attained, what happens? They will divide their time between sun and shade to maintain it. The frogs and the reptiles lower their body temperature slightly by evaporating, cooling through the skin or via the respiratory tract by panting. The Indian female python regulates its body temperature during the breeding season by thermogenesis. The python coils the eggs and can maintain the temperature. 
above 33 degrees centigrade, the metabolic rates of incubating and non-incubating pythons are the same. But at below 33 degrees centigrade, the oxygen consumption and heat production of the incubating python increases, whereas those of the non-incubating python decreases. How about thermoregulation in homeotherms? These are nothing but the warm blooded animals such as the birds and the mammals. So birds have a body temperature of about 42 degrees centigrade while mammals have the temperature of 37 degrees centigrade in the body. They have a gentle mechanism to regulate and to maintain the constant body temperature irrespective of the atmospheric temperature. Animals shows following responses to cold and heat. Response to cold, when a typical homeotherm subjected to severe cold, some adaptations help the animal from excessive cooling. For example, you can mention the presence of subcutaneous fat serves as insulator and reduces heat loss from body. The hair, body hair is raised and brought up into a more or less vertical position by the contraction of erector pili muscles. Thus, air gets trapped in the spaces between hairs. This air is warmed by the body and being a poor conductor of heat, it serves as an insulator layer around the animals. In birds, the function is done by the feathers. The superficial blood vessels in the skin constrict so that blood is directly from, directed from the surface to the deeper layers. This reduces loss of heat from the blood to surrounding atmosphere. The extra heat is produced by increasing the metabolic rate particularly of the liver and the muscles. Next, what is the response of organisms to the extreme heat, response to heat. So heat production is cut down and heat loss encouraged as follows. So animals of hot climates have relatively little subcutaneous fat. The fat deposits are localized. Thus camels fat stored only in hump and in buffalo and bison on the top of the neck. The hair is lowered by relaxation of the erector pili muscles so that it lies flat against the body surface. There is no space between the hair and no air can be trapped against the skin. The superficial blood vessels are dilated so that blood is brought up near the surface from which it can lose heat to atmosphere. Sweating occurs by sweat glands of skin and evaporation of sweat from the body surface cools the skin and the blood flowing through it. The metabolic rate falls in hot conditions so that less heat is generated by the body. Thus, in mammals, hypothalamic center functions as a thermostat. It is sensitive to temperature changes of blood and responds by sending nerve impulses through efferent nerves to the appropriate effectors. If the temperature of the blood is slightly higher than the normal, the thermoregulatory center of hypothalamus of brain detects and encourages heat loss. If the temperature falls below the normal, the center initiates processes that produce and conserve heat. Next, what is meant by thermal stratification? Thermal stratification in lakes refers to a change actually in temperature, different depths in the lake and is due to the change in water's density with temperature. It varies greatly in the different environments such as freshwater, marine and terrestrial. Temperature is an important factor for animals living in freshwater. Thermal stratification of water is characteristic of the lentic freshwater habitat such as lakes and ponds. The thermal stratification is best seen in the large perennial lakes. With the advent of winter, the temperature falls and as a consequence, the surface waters are cooled to freezing ice which is formed at the surface and this prevents the cooling of water below it. 
just below the ice layer the temperature may fall to about 2 degrees centigrade this column of water is much lighter and hence it remains below the ice with the onset of spring the ice melts till the temperature rises up to 4 degrees centigrade to the entire mass of water has the uniform temperature in summer the atmospheric temperature may rise to about 25 degrees centigrade and this serves to raise the temperature to surface water to to about uh, 21 degrees centigrade to 22 degrees centigrade the upper warmer layers of water being lighter remain at the top while the temperature of the bottom layers is raised to only 5 degrees centigrade between these two limits lies an intermediate zone in which the temperature of water varies from 9 degrees centigrade to 21 degrees centigrade this zone is referred to as thermocline the upper warmer layer is known as epilimnion while the bottom layers composed of cold waters are known as a hypolimnion thus it will be seen in the depths of the lakes the temperature variation is very limited the temperature variation in the pond waters generally follow the fluctuations of the temperature in the atmosphere as well as by the seasonal changes in marine environment temperature variation depends upon the location and the seasons the temperature range extends from minus 3 degree centigrade to 42 degree centigrade the lower limit of temperature mentioned is met within arctic and antarctic waters during winter while the upper limit is found in the tropical waters during summer let me tell you what are the differences between hibernation and estivation and before that what is estivation and hibernation so hibernation is also known as winter sleep It's a state of reduced activity in some organisms to escape cold winter conditions. For example, bears and squirrels inhabiting cold regions will undergo the mechanism in which they try to reduce their body metabolism and hide themselves in the burrows. While in case of estivation, which is also called as a summer sleep. it's a state of reduced activity in some organisms to escape desiccation due to heat in summer and such a phenomena is uh, shown by ladybird beetles bugs and snails during summer so animals are also classified based on their temperature tolerance into eurythermal stenothermal and mesothermal organisms or animals so eurythermal animals are the ones which tolerate or adapt, get adapted to a wide range of temperature for example most mammals including man birds toad wall lizard cyclops etc while the stenothermal organisms is, are capable of surviving over only a narrow range of temperature for example snails fishes snails fishes polar bear etc while one more form which is called as mesothermal forms here the thermoregulatory strategy is intermediate to cold blooded ectotherms and warm blooded endotherms for example tuna then lamnid sharks leatherback sea turtle some species of bee naked mole rats monotremes etc the next soil as a biotic factor as we all know soil is one of the most important elements of an ecosystem it is the outermost layer of earth's crust and has profound effect on distribution of plants as well as animals the factors which are related to the structure and composition of soil including its physical and chemical properties are called edaphic factors soil is made up of small particles of rock that is sand and clay which is mixed with decomposed plants and animals how are soil form soil formation occurs in two stages that is the pedogenesis and weathering of rocks what is meant by pedogenesis in pedogenesis the word weathered weathered mineral matter and the decomposed organic matter undergo biochemical biophysical and geophysical changes to form fully developed true soil the process of soil development is called pedogenesis and the study of formation of soil is called pedology
Weathering of rocks may involve chemical weathering due to hydration, hydrolysis, carbonation, oxidation reduction or chelation of rocks. The physical weathering is due to heating and cooling, wetting and drying, freezing, glaciation and action of wind. Then biological weathering is done by bacteria, fungi, lichens due to secretion of acids and form soils of different types. The soil composition, the soil comprises of mineral matter which is about 45 percent, then 5 percent of organic matter, 25 percent water and 25 percent of air. The mineral matter is divided into two categories macronutrients and micronutrients. As the name indicates, the macronutrients are required in large amounts and are fundamental building blocks of the body. Nine in number and include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, calcium, potassium and magnesium. While micronutrients are required in small quantity, they are seven in number and include iron that is ferrous, manganese, boron, molybdenum, copper, zinc and chloride. The organic matter added by the decomposition of plants and animals which animal remains you can say and the excreta of animals found up to 20 to 30 centimeter below the surface of the soil. Soil profile, what is soil profile? When a deep trench is dug in soil, it is usual to see the soil in horizontal layers called horizons. The layering which varies from one type of soil to another is known as soil profile. So freshly deposited detritus, mainly leaves, twigs and fruits make up the topmost horizon. Below it is a layer of partly decomposed detritus then a well rotted horizon of humus. In soils where earth earthworms actually are plentiful, humus is thoroughly mixed with the underlying horizon of the mineral particles. So here you can see there are five different, uh, five to six different horizons which are seen in this particular picture. Horizon O is mainly formed of humus organic, this is also called as horizon A is the stock soil, horizon E is alluviated soil, horizon B will is called as the subsoil, horizon C is the parent material, then the horizon R are the bedrocks, that is the unweathered parent material. There are different types of soils based on its formation and you can say it can be divided mainly into two types, the residual soils formed by weathering and pedogenesis and transported soils, soils which are transported by various agencies and these are of four types, the alluvial soil transported by water, colluvial soils transported by gravity, aeolian soils transported by air, glacial soils transported by slipping of glaciers. On the basis of particle size, soils are divided into five types, the gravel which has a diameter of more than 2 millimeter, coarse sand will be having a size or diameter between 2 to 0.2 millimeters, fine sand will have diameter between 0.2 to 0.02 millimeters, silt will have a diameter uh, of soil particles which will be between 0 0.02 to 0 0.002 millimeters and the clay will have soil particle size which is less than 0 0.002 millimeters. So and based on the relative proportion of soil particles, soils are divided into the sandy soils, the clay soils, silt soils and loamy soil. The sandy soils will have 85 percent of sand and 15 percent of clay and silt while the clay soils will contain 50 percent clay and 50 percent silt or sand of both. Silt soils will have 90 percent silt and 10 percent of sand and loamy soils will contain the 70 percent sand and 30 percent clay or silt of both. The next is the soil flora and the fauna. The soil flora and fauna 
comprises of the following. These are classified into three major groups, namely the microflora and microfauna, mesofauna and the macrofauna. Microflora includes blue-green algae, bacteria and fungi, actinomites. Microfauna has sizes of 20, to micro, 20 micrometer to 200 micrometer. They include mites, rotifers, nematodes, then copepods, crustaceans, the protozoans which include amoeba, flagellates, ciliates, etc. Soil bacteria include autotrophic and heterotrophic bacteria. Autotrophic bacteria derive energy by oxidation of carbon atoms, for example, hydrogen, sulfur, iron bacteria, etc. Heterotrophic bacteria like the rhizobium, azotobacter. Then soil fungi are the parasitic fungi, which are then the rust, the blights, saprophytic mushrooms, then symbiotic fungi are the mycorrhiza. Actinomycetes bring about the decomposition of organic matter. Blue green algae include anabina, nostoc, and microcysts. Mesofauna includes the spiders, mites, springtails, etc., having the size 200 micrometers to 1 centimeter. The mesofauna includes earthworms, scorpions, etc. Then fossorial animals are digging animals. They live in the burrows, which live in burrows. You can say the snakes, ichthyophis, etc. are found in the soil. Then cursorial animals, which run fast, are the organisms like rodents, rabbits, kangaroos, wallabies, ostriches, etc. are also seen in the, not inside the soil, on the soil. So, lastly, uh, to conclude, the outcome of the study is abiotic environment includes such factors as light, temperature, soil, water and radiation. The abiotic environment is made up of many objects and forces that influence one another and the surrounding community of living things. The weather is an important group of abiotic factors as the living and non-living things. The outcome of species interactions can change depending on the particular conditions under which they occur, including both abiotic and abiotic factors such as physical stress and species traits. For example, the traits of interacting species and individuals can influence amelioration of environmental conditions. Further, the response of individuals to environmental context can depend on traits determined by source population, including genetic background and maternal investment. Thank you.